episode of Bits and Bites, brought to you by the Greater Wilmington Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm Jessica Bittman with the Greater Wilmington Convention and Visitors Bureau here with another episode of Bits and Bites. Today we are at the Kalmar Nickel and the Copeland Maritime Center. We are going to speak with Captain Sharon and learn the history of the ship. We're going to see the inside of the Copeland Maritime Center and learn why visitors want to come here and all the great things that they can experience. Hi, we're on the ship and I'm with Captain Sharon and she's going to tell us a little bit about where we are and how this works. Hi everyone. Um, welcome aboard the Kalmar Nickel. This is a ship that is a recreation of a ship from the 1620s that brought the first European settlers right here to Wilmington, Delaware in 1638. Um, on board the ship, uh, we are sitting on the windlass. The windlass is used to haul heavy lines in the forward part of the ship, such as our anchor cable, or uh, to help us dock the ship. Um, and right behind us we have the forecastle, which is kind of an enclosed area where we have rope storage, anchor cables, and in the 1620s, this is where the sailors used to live. Right back here, right in this exposed deck area. So it's pretty, pretty important space on the ship. Yeah, and how many people would be on the ship at one time um, when it was sailing originally? When we were coming across the ocean uh, in 1637, 1638, we had about 24 crew and about 24 soldiers on the ship. Really? 48 people on the ship? That's amazing. The soldiers were cargo, so we stuck them down below with the other cargo on board the ship. Um, and we came here to trade uh, for beaver pelts with the Lenape tribe. Um, so the cargo was an important part of the ship for an armed merchant vessel. Okay. Now the crew slept in here, and that looks like a pretty small area for 24 folks. but. Uh, if you think about it, half of them are sailing the boat at a time, so now we're back to 12 people live in here, and a couple of them are officers, might have better accommodations. So maybe 10 or 9 people lived in here at one time. Okay. And did they eat on the ship? Did they, you know, shower? Is, you know, are the everyday functions we might have at home, are they here available to them? Uh, well, they did eat, of course, on a voyage. They had a, um, a wood-burning stove to, to cook when needed, right up here in the forecastle. Um, no showers, of course. Sailors didn't need showers, so months at a time without without a shower was pretty normal. Um, I, I imagine they maybe used a bucket of water if they needed to, um, and that's that's how you did it back then. Excellent. How long would the trek take? And though they were coming from Sweden, did they make it multiple trips? Um, there was four transatlantic crossings um, from uh, 1638 to about 1651, and they really came back and forth a bunch of times to continue to trade, bring get more beaver pelts from the Lenapes um, in exchange for duffel cloth and copper pots and whatnot. They also established the colony of New Sweden, so they brought people here. Um, on subsequent voyages, they brought women and children to help establish the colony of New Sweden. And the cool part about it is they made friends with the Lenapes. Uh, instead of coming in and taking over the land, they kind of worked it out and um, lived side by side with them here. That's awesome. So tell me, as a captain, how long have you been working on the ship? Have you always been the captain? I've been involved with the ship since 2000 as a volunteer and starting in 2007 became one of two of the captains of the ship. I am the port captain, relief captain, and so my job is get the ship ready to sail and help sail as needed as captain or any of the officers' positions uh, as people take breaks. And my co-captain, Lauren, comes on and she does most of the sailing during the sailing season, so we kind of tag team it. And I work with a lot of the volunteer training program that we have. Excellent. And was it always your goal to be a ship captain? No, I was uh, going to be a music teacher. I, I did that for uh, uh, five or so years. And when the opportunity to join the ship's crew came, I, I jumped at it and 
I still play my violin in a local orchestra, so I, I can do both. Oh, so do you guys have like a little band here when you do the sailings <laughs> and you might like have the violin and somebody else busts out a tambourine, like what happens? <laughs> Sometimes you'll hear us sing a sea shanty as we raise the sail. Oh, I love that. So that's pretty cool. That is really cool. <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. So um, I have to ask, are there any nefarious stories? Do you have any ghosts or is there any kind of, you know, do the carvings come to life in the evenings or anything like that? The carvings are an interesting part of the ship. Um, sailors were superstitious, so um, we have crazy things like this gargoyle thing over top of the bell. Not exactly sure exactly what that means, but we do have watchdogs on the ship, and the watchdogs look like they're sleeping, but they are keeping a weather eye looking out over the sea, so you can check that out uh, on your tour when you come aboard. And then we have all kinds of other carvings that you'll see that maybe sailors would have carved whatever kind of struck their fancy as they were coming over the ocean for a long period of time or people that built the ship. This is a very ornate period in history. So there's bright colors all over our, our transom and um, mermaids and all kinds. Of, you'll even find a unicorn if you look closely. Ooh, I'll have to find that. Now where the carvings you said that the sailors did, were some of the carvings from the sailors, like somebody doing artwork on a ship and then it just like gets slapped up there? Like perhaps, <laughs> perhaps so, we'll never know, will we? No, I guess not. Excellent, well I'm really excited to see a little bit more of the ship and I really appreciate the time that you gave to tell us a little bit about it and, and let's go for a sail. I'm let's go sailing, <laughs> yeah, you can sail on board the, the ship, uh, come on board and, and we'll show you a good time. Wonderful, and how do I get tickets? Oh, for May, you call our office. We're doing um, zone sales uh, where people can have a socially distant zone of the ship all to their self, like their family group or whatever. Uh, and then starting in June, we will um, shift away from the zone model and we will have a half capacity model where you can just go online and buy a ticket. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Great. Well, we wish you a wonderful season and thank you so much. It was great to meet you, Sharon. Thank you. You're welcome. So we are now at the Copeland Maritime Center, which is the home port of the Calmar Nickel, and I am with the Executive Director, Kathy Parcells. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Jessica. Hi. So tell me about this building okay. that we're in right now. Well, first of all, thank you all very much for being here. We're really excited to have an opportunity to, to share this gem yeah. on East 7th Street Peninsula. Um, this building was built in 2014, officially opened in 2015. And it was built for several reasons. Uh, one was that we needed a, a dedicated education area because we run education programs for thousands of school children every year. And we needed indoor space and a beautiful space for them to come and an educational space for them to come. So we built, we built an education center where we are right now. We also needed a, an area for ship maintenance. Maintaining a tall ship is a ton of work. It's a year round activity and we have over 200 volunteers who are here working on the ship. And so we needed space for them to work and for activities to take place you know, on the ship to get the ship ready for the sailing season each year. So that's actually on the first floor. That's not open to the public, but the, merit, the rest of the second floor and the lobby are open to the public um, at the Maritime Center. Excellent. And what could a visitor expect to do when they're here? So, um, so we offer a lot of, of really interesting permanent exhibits to, uh, in a self-guided fashion. Uh, you can a visitor can come here and learn about the science of sailing, which is where we're standing right now. There are different um, uh, graphics describing different considerations, things as a captain might think about when the captain is sailing the ship. Um, so, you know, points of sail, ballistics, which we're not using, sail power, dead reckoning, celestial navigation, celestial sphere. Uh, so this is one exhibit. Uh, we have an exhibit dedicated to Kalmar, which of course we're Kalmar Nickel. Uh, and, and Kalmar Nickel means key of Kalmar, oh, I didn't Kalmar know. Sweden. So, um, and actually Kalmar Sweden is also a sister city for Wilmington, Delaware. So we have a, an, an exhibit that talks about Kalmar so you can learn about Sweden and Kalmar. And then I'll show you some other exhibits as well. But, um, but so uh, uh, this is really um, 
an opportunity for people to come and learn a variety of different uh, things about the ship, about our history, history of Delaware, history of this area, um, and uh, I think people find it really intriguing. Excellent. And how would I get tickets to see the, the Copeland Maritime Museum? You can just come. You don't have to make a reservation in advance. So, um, yeah, we are limiting capacity, um, but, you know, that ha really hasn't been a, a, an issue. But, um, uh, but you, can, you can just come. We're open from 2 to 4 every afternoon. Um, and then on weekends, we're actually open from 10 to 4 on Saturdays and 12 to 4 on Sundays. We do ask for um, a, 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 we have a fee. Uh, but we think it's pretty minimal. It's five dollars for an adult and three dollars for a child. Oh, I think that's fair. Thank you. <laughs> we do too. So, um, so anyway, we we love to have people come here, and uh, we, there's in the lobby actually there's also an orientation video about the original Palmar Nickel that lasts about ten minutes. You can learn about the first voyage, um, and it's a sort of a synopsis of a documentary, an hour long documentary that we have, and it has actually been featured on WHYY several times so yeah but there have been over 800,000 views of this documentary in Sweden oh, that's so crazy. they've been thrilled they've been really thrilled to learn about this part of their history because the ship came and settled the colony of New Sweden in 1638 and many of the Swedes think about a, the great migration in the 1900s not realizing that actually there was a there was a colony here in the in the 1600s Incredible. Yeah. And are there any personal favorites that are things that you find, you know, as executive director, Kathy, like what do you really enjoy here at the Maritime Center? What would be a highlight that you think I have to see? The thing I think that is surprising, there are two exhibits that I think are really surprising to people and that are really neat. One is called Watercraft of the World. It's a collection of model ships from around the world, 73 model ships. That is, that's really outstanding, yeah. and, it's real, and it really does represent each continent, and each, each, each little boat and ship have, have a story. Um, so that's a, really neat, that's a really neat exhibit. The other one is uh, we have in um, the room next to it, actually, it is an exhibit about uh, Wil uh, Wilmington's industrial history from the Civil War to World War II. Because the area along the Christina River was actually a, a heavy industrial site building rail cars and boats. And so there is a, the, this other exhibit details and description the, um, the, the different types of industries. There was even whaling. I mean, there was all sorts of different industries that were taking place, mostly, again, train, car, and, and um, ship, shipbuilding. But um, that, there are some fantastic uh, photographs uh, from the era, uh, you know, particularly around World War II, and uh, it's just a really neat, it's a really neat exhibit as well. So, oh, you can't find anything like it around, no, you can't find any of this uh, in, in Delaware. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see what's inside. Let's go in. Okay. Okay. Well, that's it for today. I had such a great time learning about the Copeland Maritime Center and the Kelmar Nickel. I can't wait to go for a sail. It actually sails right along past here down the Christina River past the Wilmington Riverfront down to historic Newcastle. So you can see a little bit of the sites that you're gonna to wanna to come back and visit later. So I'm gonna go walk around, I'm gonna get a nice cream cone and enjoy a great day. See you next time.